we really want to preserve the realtor's essential role in the transaction. That's something that is kind of first and foremost for us. We might invest in consumer solutions or those adjacent industries I mentioned earlier, but all of that is for the purpose of really preserving the, the realtor's role and scale technology and give realtors all the tools they need to understand this new tech that's just going to continue to empower their ability to serve clients best, to serve consumers best. Welcome back to Nevada Realtors Today, your place for timely updates on the news and trends that matter to realtors in the Silver State. Now let's join your Nevada Realtors President, Brandon Roberts, and Nevada Realtors CEO, Tiffany Banks, for today's episode of Nevada Realtors Today. We are here today um, with Ashley Stitton, I'm the managing partner of NAR Reach. So Ashley brings more than a decade of global marketing and business development experience from the CPG and real estate industry. Ashley leads NAR's Reach program focused on the U.S. residential sector. The Reach program accelerates the growth of top technology companies through mentorship, education, and exposure. Thank you so much for joining Brandon and I here today, Ashley. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate the opportunity to be here. So before we dive into what NAR does, and we'd love to hear about you, like what what's one thing that excites you about what what are you passionate about in in the work that you get to do each and every day? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, I am passionate about technology, which you know probably pretty obvious um, from from the role, but. But specifically working with startup founders, um, these entrepreneurs are so similar to realtors in a lot of ways. Um, really talented, really sharp folks who um, are, are so incredibly um, strategic in nature. Um, they have just really robust skill sets kind of across the spectrum. Um, I've always chosen roles that are a bit, maybe you could call them safer on the corporate side of things. So I'm really inspired by entrepreneurs who, who take more risks. In, in their careers, like realtors and, and like tech founders do. So that, you know, gets me motivated every day to serve both our members, but also the entrepreneurs that we serve in our portfolio. Awesome. And so when you think about NAR's reach, can you explain, because I think you've said before that you're the best kept secret. What does that mean? What is NAR's reach program? Yeah, yeah, we're not trying to be the best kept secret, um, but um, unintentionally the best kept secret, I think, at NAR is our REACH program. Um, REACH has actually been around since 2013. SCV was incepted in 2008 and REACH came around a few years later, um, really with the, the sole goal of supporting entrepreneurs who want to innovate in real estate. And so REACH is a program. Um, we call ourselves a bit more of a scale-up program, um, sometimes like into an accelerator, but maybe um, a more bespoke version of an accelerator. Um, there's a lot of great programs out there that teach business fundamentals. Um, we don't teach business fundamentals to our founders. What we bring them is real estate expertise. We pair them with key mentors in the industry. We give them education on how the heck does organized real estate work and what do they need to know about it. Um, and then certainly exposure, a lot of in-person events and virtual events to get them exposure to the broadest set of members that they can be exposed to because then they can continue to refine and tweak and evolve their products, the more knowledgeable they are on the market and the more member exposure they have. That makes a lot of sense. And you think with founders, they have an idea on what they want to build, but then matching and pairing them with a practitioner who could say, no, wait, this is what I need every day to make my business more successful. Now build that. Is that exactly? Okay. Yeah. We actually have a lot of founders who are realtors or former realtors themselves. And what they really value about the program is they may know or have known their market really well, but they need uh, better expertise on the broader market. What's going to work across different geographies or production levels or team sizes. Um, And so um, we love to see realtor founders too, who are solving for a pain point they experienced in their business um, because they, they really understand. They can walk a mile in your shoes, right? They get it. They know it. You guys find uh, tech companies or tech products and these mm-hmm. founders that want to grow in, in the real estate space. Is that correct? Yeah. And some of them are, um, you know, direct real estate solutions. Some of them are adjacent industries, insurance, title, escrow, um, these, these adjacent industries that support real estate. Sometimes they're solutions that um, have grown in those adjacent industries. And they're coming to us looking for that deeper insight into how to break into real estate and specifically how to work with the realtor and brokerage community 
Um, and then some of these solutions are just a ready fit for realtors business. They come to us um, really looking for that broader exposure because it's really cool tech, but we got to get the word out there. Yeah. How do you come across these people? And can you give us some examples of people that have gone through the, or yeah. some founders that have gone through the program? Yeah, we meet um, a lot of our founders at industry events, both real estate industry events and other events that um, are more for technologists or for the investor communities. And we try to cast um, a far and wide net. Um, we want to be anywhere that the entrepreneurs are, whether they know real estate, don't, don't know real estate. Um, and some solutions, um, I'll kind of give you a spectrum when I mentioned adjacent industries. Notarize is a great example of a company that came through the REACH program much like a DocuSign, e-signature, remote online notarization, applicable to a variety of industries, but they chose to really get their scale in real estate. And that's why they chose to work with, with REACH and SCD. And now they've um, certainly expanded and, and achieved a lot of scale in, in adjacent industries as well. Um, and then when we think about kind of ready fit solutions that can, can just drop right into a realtor's business, some of the solutions in this year's cohort like Traxi. They, they built a project management tool directly for realtors. The founder, VJ built it based on pain points he experienced in his own business. It's like the Asana or the Trello, but for real estate, directly built for um, you know, a broker, a team, and agent's business. So those are just a couple quick examples. We have about 250 companies actually in our portfolio. Um, that is on a global scale. About 100 of those solutions are from our U.S. program. One. Brandon, so when you think about even in your like your your weekly office meetings, is tech discussed? And if it is, are there tech companies that are presented, or is that not even something, Brandon, that you um, you don't you don't even know where to start sometimes as a broker of who to introduce or what products to introduce to your agents? So uh, we have a tech stack. Most companies do of products that they use. Um, but no, it's, it. I think it's, uh, and a lot of agents go out and, and research this stuff themselves. Um, I think that's a good point to, to be able to introduce them to some of the programs that are going, or some of the tech that's going through your program. Um, but yeah, I mean, that it hasn't been a, a high point of our sales meetings, but it probably will be now. And I think like if you were to have like agents taking down notes from this this podcast of like what companies to go research research, is it there's different companies that are better fit for that particular agent? And how do you know? Do you just try things? Is there a low price point? Like what are your best suggestions for agents that don't know where to start? Yeah, best place to start, I would say, um, each year, we pick about eight companies, and the idea is that the, that's the right amount to be digestible um, for, for the market, even though we have 100 solutions in the portfolio, they're at different levels of scale. So what that means is each eight we pick each year isn't necessarily meaning put these eight directly into your business this year. Some of them could be more forward-looking solutions, and the best thing to do is be in the know, get familiar with them start to look at the markets they're expanding to, see what, see how they're working in other markets, look at those peer practices. Um, and then some of them are ready fit solutions. You can drop right into your business today and you work with those companies to um, package them in a unique way, whether that is at a special price for our members or at some kind of you know trial opportunity or they're in a beta testing phase where they really just genuinely want the member feedback to try them. Um, so the best thing is every April, we launch our cohort of eight, and um, we always do a press release distributed through NAR. That's the best place to start. Every April, look for that and just get familiar with those eight solutions. Um, again, some that you can drop right into your business. Others, um, especially like the category of AI, right? There's so much AI you could take on and incorporate it in your business. You don't need to do it all overnight. So some of it is just get familiar with it. Just look at the practical applications for your business maybe for something down the road, when you're ready, when your budget is ready, we get it. You can't just put a hundred new solutions into your, into your business um, every year. Um, but just get, get, you know, familiar with the new technology that's out there is the best thing that every agent can do. So you put out the eight, is there a, another website that we can go to, to see some of these technologies? Like if I was looking for maybe a, a CRM or a contact management system, um, is there a place I could go to maybe research that on your guys' sites or? 
Yeah, absolutely. So NERReach.com is where we have our full portfolio listed across all of our regions. We operate seven regions. So two for the U.S. One of them, the program that I lead, is focused on the residential sector. And then we also have a program that focuses on the commercial sector. So if you uh, select on the website commercial, if you're a commercial broker interested in those technologies, that's where you'd find the suite of products and services for the commercial sector. And then we have um, programs outside the U.S. in Canada, Australia, uh, Latin America, U.K., and Israel. And the idea being, let's take a look at those awesome solutions um, that are growing and scaling those other markets, help them achieve some scale. And hopefully some of those solutions will also make it to to the U.S. market. Um, So those are ones to keep an eye on. Um, But yeah, going to our website is a great place to track or you can follow us on LinkedIn. Um, We're at N-A-R space reach, R-E-A-C-H. And LinkedIn is where we put, um, you know, your most up-to-date news. So any of our companies that might be doing product launches or maybe they have special offers ahead of big events like the NXT conference at the end of the year. Um, or anytime we launch a new cohort, that's a great place to check in. Or if you want to connect with us at events, we try to post about the events that will be headed to there as well, like IOI kicking off for. That's incredible. So, Ash, was there any company that you guys passed on that ended up going on to be very successful and you really kicked yourselves for not seeing that as the potential unicorn? That's a that's a good question. Um, th- you know, there's been a lot over the year because we really try to pick the founders that we can help the most. There's been some great solutions that have come our way. Uh, sometimes it's a timing thing. You know, sometimes the the timing of our program, which runs April to November, um, doesn't fit. Um, it's also, you know, actually pretty hard to pick the right solutions because we're trying to balance that um, that fit for solutions that a realtor can drop into their business today, but the really forward-looking stuff mm-hmm. um, and in the forward-looking solutions, you know, that, that's where you find um, the, the unicorns, I think, is the, the stuff that um, it's actually hard to envision the practical application today, but that's where we can be really helpful um, for some of these founders. So I'm trying to think of a specific solution. Um, I'll, I'll come back to me on that one. Okay, I think some of the brands out there that that we might have missed. Um, but we do hope that um, every founder connects with us because even if they don't go through the REACH program, they could serve as a mentor for uh, mm-hmm. our program. Or there's a ton of other great ways to connect with, with NAR and the, um, the group that we pull into, the Strategic Business Innovation Technology Group which manages the Alliance's program where members can find a ton of great um, additional discounts and unique offers from technology companies in, in that portfolio. Um, the IOI event, another great way to digest tech and founders well beyond just our portfolio. So you don't have to go through reach, but be connected to us. Be connected to NR and, and let's all elevate you know, the role of innovation together. Do the founders connect with each other and actually help support one another in their endeavors? They do. They do. Yeah. We actually host an annual portfolio summit that's just for our founders. It's very peer-to-peer driven. It's for founders to lean on each other, especially given that some of them are are realtors or practitioners themselves. There's so much wisdom they can impart. Um, We have technical founders. We have non-technical founders. We have founders from, I believe, 40 countries around the world. Um, and so just as consumers in their own market, what they can share with each other about the practice of real estate um, around the world or in different markets around the U.S. Um, is so important. And just, you know, to be able to lean on each other, um, much like realtors are entrepreneurs and peer-to-peer learning is is so important and sometimes competitive, but, you know, in, in probably in a healthy way, see what your competitors are doing because iron sharpens iron. <laughs> And when you think about the settlement and obviously, you know, we've had a long time leading up to digesting what the settlement would mean for our membership. Um, Are there certain tech and solutions that have been um, thought of like in this last year or two or or people founders are currently working on to help with like this new landscape of of what the life after August 17th or essentially November settlement looks like? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we are we are pretty inundated with a lot of um, very right now uh, kind of solutions that are still figuring themselves out. So we're trying to be really cautious not to 
you know, take um, maybe a, a gut reaction solution um, because we really want to make sure that these solutions deliver sustainable results, you know, for, for our members. Um, I would say um, one of the themes for this year's cohort was tools that help a member with client communication um, and client retention. No, that wasn't intentionally uh, as part of any result of, of any settlement because we picked these cohorts so far ahead, but that's obviously extremely relevant right now. So tools like Traxy, which is project management with a feature that you can um, bring the consumer into the transaction. So a great way for an agent to really walk the consumer along that, that um, home buying journey and keep them informed and um, you know, deliver that transparency and, and level of trust that we know realtors are really good at delivering. Um, solutions like Cocoon, which has a, a really cool iHome dashboard, is great for client retention. How how do you, you know how do realtors stay top of mind post transaction, um, staying in touch with, with realtors? There's a lot of great ways to do it. The Cocoon iHome dashboard is a really great way um, because it's frequent, valuable uh, communication with that consumer helping them manage their home. So it puts the realtor in a place of being that uh, somewhat of a financial, you know, advisor, a home advisor, um, you know, a great way to communicate with consumers on what are the best renovations to make or what might be the best appliances to consider, um, things like that. And there's a lot of analytics driven behind it, but it puts the realtor in the driver's seat in retaining those clients. So solutions, um, in AI that make communication easier, faster, more efficient. Um, so that realtors, we know the amount of communication that you guys have with clients every minute of every day. It feels like, I don't know when you guys sleep. Um, but some of these AI tools can just help deliver more efficiency, which is really important. I think in today's market. Mm -hmm. I agree. And you're trying, and, and our agents are trying to you know, come up with this, figure out the new norm at the same time, yeah. do what they've always done at the same time, continue to deliver results. It's like this unique balancing and, yeah. you know, the majority of our, of our members, I think, what was that, Brandon, do you remember when they did, I think it was a national study of the median, um, amount that an agent makes like $55,000 or something. And so you're constantly trying to like, get be innovative, think of ways that you can make your business more successful, but then also be out there as an entrepreneur, really trying to, you know, show your value to, to your new clients that don't know you. So it's, it's a, it's a unique balance, but what I love about what, what you guys do and the tech behind it is the goal is to make all of those things easier. Yes. Not more difficult. Yes, exactly. We want, uh, we're, we're a harder, work smarter, not harder. And we really want to preserve the realtor's essential role in the transaction. That's something that is kind of first and foremost for us. We might invest in consumer solutions or in those adjacent industries I mentioned earlier, but all of that is for the purpose of um, really preserving the, the realtor's role and scale technology and give realtors all the tools they need to understand this new tech that's just going to continue to empower their ability to serve clients best, to serve consumers best. Yeah. I was going to say a good business practice for, for you guys or reach out would be to work even directly with the brokers. Because I think about, again, all the office meetings that, that Brandon has, that that's, you know, 500 agents that can actually hear directly from a source. Yeah, we love to um, if we if we have the opportunity, you know, to be there to to speak with your um, with your teams, we love that. Um, but also, a lot of our companies um, are eager to come in and provide demos, even if you know just to get familiar with the technology. That's, right. that's we, we're not we don't want to be pushy, and it's not about selling this new technology, and it's it's getting familiar with it and it's testing the right tools. So until you find what that right fit is for you, but a lot of our companies. Um, just love the opportunity to even speak with, you know, with your team, whether it's five agents or 500, 500 is great. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's, um, you know, some of the best trainings I've been to are things that I've gone where agents seem to get the most out of it is where they're demoing products and, and stuff like that so that they can select what to use. Um, in in this, how do you guys how do you guys select who gets to go through this program? Is there an application process, and is there a cost? And then the the follow up would be on that is: Do you invest in any of these companies, or is there an arm that does? 
Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, yes to all of the above. Yes, there's an application. So we'll open it in um, early November. Um, we meet with, we take applications to learn more about each company. Uh, we're, of course, meeting with companies year round, but formal application in November. We make our selections in, in January and early February and then onboarding March and April each year. Um, we do invest in each of the companies that come through the program. Um, and that's through through Reach and then Second Century Ventures, which SCD and Reach are are part and parcel, one in the same more or less, but Reach is the scale up program. And then SCD is typically what we use to support follow on um, investment with these companies. We want to continue to see them scale, and sometimes that takes additional capital. Um, and so that's really where SCD comes into play. So the ultimate goal, right, is a company applies for Reach in November. We pick them for the class, typically a few hundred applications. We pick eight rock stars each year. We do have multiple companies that have applied a couple times. So sometimes it, it is a timing fit. Sometimes it is um, what does the market mean in terms of, of the type of solutions that we consider each year. Um, and then we support them through, through REACH, which is um, the most intensive year in the portfolio. But once a company is part of REACH, they're always an alumni to us, so we continue to support them at industry events through our annual summit and, like I mentioned, hopefully through additional investment through Second Century Ventures. Okay, and then on, on do you guys help them with pricing models for real estate or, or is that kind of up to the company? We do. I mean, there's a variety of um, asks that, that our companies um, come to us with. Um, this year, uh, there's been a strong theme of looking for support, guidance, expertise on agent adoption. Really great tools and a lot of time, you know, maybe with the broker, um, but then finding that balance of how to help the broker uh, achieve that agent adoption and how can our companies build the best training? How can they come in and do demos or be in communication with agents to make sure that these tools get the most use um, so that they are, you know, valuable? Um other things that have been popular this year um, for, I would say, um, some of our um, founders who don't necessarily come from real estate is just general understanding of, of what's going on with the market and the timing of it. Certainly, um, you know, August 17th wasn't the best time to be, you know, calling out realtors and asking to demo some new tech. You guys are really, really busy and focused on some things. So a lot of it was just navigating, you know, what's going on in the market. Um, other things that um, have been prevalent for the last few years, affordability and, and just helping our companies understand what does that mean to their business, um, whether there are solutions that um, helps to solve for that or doesn't. Um, what do they need to know about what realtors are doing every day, digesting every day, analyzing every day um, so they know where they fit? One of the best um, stats I like to share with our companies is from one of the NAR research reports in terms of the breakdown of a typical budget for a realtor. And I believe the number one expense is car expenses. And technology is way, 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 way down on the chart. Hmm. Um, and so it's a helpful reminder that, um, you know, new technology can't be top of mind at every moment. Um, so we spend a lot of time with our companies helping them refine their value proposition, maybe their pricing strategy, uh, helping them maybe build exclusive offers or bundles or, or different ways that they can um, present their offering their products or services um, to realtors in a meaningful way because we know we might only get a minute of your time. So we want to make sure it's a really valuable minute. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. When you think about a company like Notarize, can you tell us, was that something that came up or came out and about during COVID or after COVID? Um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, they actually joined the REACH program long before COVID. I want to say 2015, um, 2015 ish. Uh, they went through the program, certainly um, saw heightened interest um, during the pandemic and, and mm -hmm. post pandemic. They're one of our really interesting case studies because um, when they came through the REACH program, we were able to use NAR's advocacy arm to support them. That's mm -hmm. not an ask of every company, not every company in our portfolio has that need. Um, but we've enjoyed a great relationship with NAR's advocacy team. NAR has um, supported the SECURE Act uh, before Congress, um, which has helped um, with remote online notarization getting passed in, I believe, almost all 50 states. I'm not, I don't think we're quite there yet, but we're getting close. Um, but yeah, certainly saw heightened interest in a lot of digital tools post-pandemic, notarized being one of them. 
All this is exciting. Brandon, are you writing a lot of this down? Or are you going to invite Ashley to come visit? I would and love to. And, and yeah, I've team. written down about five, five applications already. So um, yeah, this is, this is all good stuff. So um, I think you guys should stop keeping this a secret. I think it's a tremendous benefit <laughs> yeah. that NAR puts out for us. So yeah, we don't, we don't mean it to be a secret. So we're trying to do a better job of, of getting the word out there far and wide. Um, going to as many of these events. Um, I think you guys host just state events as well. So um, we need to make sure we get there to get in front of your your members. We'll certainly be at NXT at the, the end of the year with our, our full cohort and a whole bunch of our, our alumni. But we'll we'll keep pushing harder to, to get the word out there because we solely exist to help accelerate technology for realtors. So we want the word out far and wide. That's incredible, Ashley. And if you were to leave us with one other company, you mentioned a few, but one other company that some of our agents should go look into today, what would that company be? Gosh, it's hard to play favorites. <laughs> without <laughs> playing favorites. Without what playing. would be a top, top of mind that you yeah. actually have gotten really good feedback from agents of, I'd love to learn more. And where do I go? Yeah, I would say um, AI has been really, really a uh, topic of conversation the last couple of years. So two companies in our current cohort that I'll mention, um, which I think every agent should take a look at. One is Scout, uh, really focused on a lead gen um, and um, really qualifying quality, quality leads. And again, that that focus on communication with clients, with consumers. And then Perlin also um, um applying AI to a suite of tools um, that can be applied at the, the agent level, at the brokerage level. Um, but both of those really driving a lot of efficiency back into a realtor's daily business. Um, and I would say, um, you know, with AI being of such a buzzword and it can get really complicated and confusing, both of these founders and both of these companies um, are um, doing a really great job of uh, focusing on the practical application. Um, Drew from Scout will be launching some cool tools um, soon that will make it even easier, more plug and play to drop into your business. Um, and then Georgie from Berlin, really passionate about the um, fairness in an AI, being FHA compliant. Um, and so that's something they're really, really focused on, which I know is something that's important to every agent. So check both of those solutions out. Um, if anybody's going to uh, be uh, at IOI, that's a great place to connect with them, but um, connect with us and those companies at Rezo, at NXT, at all the big conferences uh, this fall if you can. Or let us know if you want to do a virtual demo and we'll have them come in. And, and if they can be, they'll come to your office. If, if uh, virtual makes sense, then happy to share all this good stuff over Zoom with your teams, your agents, your members. That is awesome. And Ashley, you are incredible. We're so lucky to have you uh, as the managing partner of Reach, and more importantly, just everything that you do. As far as you're, you're really passionate, and I know how much you care about these founders having success and all of our members having success. And so, um, I admire you, and you're incredible. And thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you, thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Tiffany. Really appreciate the thank opportunity. You. Look forward to meeting more of your members soon. Thanks, Ashley.